Hey everybody, uh, I figured I would maybe, rather than take 100 photos and try to make diagrams to explain this rosebud selvage, I would just make a quick and dirty video real quick. Um, as you can see, this is the half circle that I have in the photos in the Facebook post this is going to be linked to. Um, this is an example in Mom and Stitch, so that's uh, it's a finished type stitch with one loop on your thumb, two loop behind, and an F2 connection. Um, I like it with super bulky yarn like this. Um, so I've been working this as kind of as you would a normal circle. I'm out to this row, which is six normal stitches between every increase. Um, I finished up my last increase right here, so I've got the three remaining selvage stitches. Um, these always kind of operate outside of what your main body of work is, and it always works kind of nicely. I haven't had to count any of these rows. I just kind of kept in pattern with what was going on. Super cool. Uh, the reason it's three loops, and I'll point them out in just a second, is because Mommin has three loops in it, one front loop, two back loops. Uh, you need to have the same number of stitches extra for your selvage as there are loops in the stitch you're using, um, which I'll explain in the post. Right here, it's kind of hard to see because I do pull these tight, as you'll see in a second, I adjust them, but there are three loops, in fact, right here, so I'll count them out for you. One, two, three, and then that goes into our last main stitch, so those are the three there. They kind of curve down here. It's a little hard to see on this yarn, um, but it's not that difficult once you get going. It's real easy to see, like, that's where my three selvage stitches are. So when I come to this, these don't have increases or decreases or anything, so I'm going to make three normal stitches real quick. Three normal Mommin stitches. So there's one. Pick this one up here. Nope. Right there. Two. And then my last one, which is down here, which can be a little confusing until you get used to it because it kind of pulls down here. But this is my last one. This is my third selvage stitch. Okay. And then once I do that, I'm going to manually retension these. If you're good at freehand or um, other types of null bending where you adjust the stitches as you go, feel free to do that. I'm just going to adjust my last two stitches here. I leave the third one alone. So we're going to go to this guy right here. And you just kind of hold it so it won't cinch too tight. You don't want like a knot, but you want it to kind of like collapse in on itself. You'll feel what that means. And then you just kind of work your way out. This is the same way as you like taper an edge. And then I'm going to pull my tail here, get that kind of snug. And so you can kind of see right there, it just tapers down to probably about needle tension. I'm not going to needle tension with this one because the shape isn't good for it. Okay, so there's that part. And then now you leave this thread up here, you turn your work. And you can see the stitches that you just adjusted right here. Um, again, this isn't the greatest yarn to do an example of, but you'll get the idea. So what I'm going to do is make a rosebed start into these three selvage stitches again. And so I found the easiest way to do that is so I'm going to put my needle in there. My yarn comes up here. I do thumb, translate how you need to, but I'm going to hold that there and just make one loop into that first stitch. Okay, so you can see first stitch has a loop on it, so I'm going to go to the second one, and what makes this like the rosebud start is I'm going to stick through all of those, and then just make a second loop, and then I need three, so I'm going to do one more, there's my next stitch, um, and I'm because I'm doing an F2 connection, I can't up two loops, but anyhow, that goes back under all of these again, and then I pull that through, and then this is my selvage stitch, and it gives me the loops that I need to start making Mommin again. And so then this, you don't count these if you are counting stitches. This next one is going to be, so I need to have one loop on my thumb, two behind. It's a finished stitch. So this is going to count as my stitch number one for the row. You just continue your way around. When you get to the other end, you do the exact same process on both sides it's pretty straightforward. Um, I was worried that it would only work with like this stitch and this yarn, but I did do a couple in a finer gauge, like a worsted weight yarn, and it turned out really super well in my opinion. The edges still look super nice. <coughs> but because you are, like this is a finished two plus three, um, so the selvage is five stitches, so it is a little 
more fanned out, but it does so in a way that I think, again, is still pretty deliberate and it's not too difficult to pick up stitches in. Um, actually, it kind of has a nice decorative effect because it um, makes these kind of nice fans that go into your fabric on you know both sides. But yeah, of course, also this can just be done with uh, rectangle pieces. This is what I did here. You can see the kind of fan edging on it. Um, works pretty darn well and you can just do square rectangle whatever flat edge this is um, again i was looking at how to do pickups so ignore that the it should look like this side as well um, but yeah anyhow that's the rosebud what i'm going to call the rosebud selvage until i find somebody else doing something similar um, i think it's very cool i'm excited to finally have something that can make it work flat because there's a lot of shapes and a lot of other projects that could very easily um, use that and so I'm excited to finally have something that lets me work a flat row or something back and forth that looks nice in my opinion